On January the 30th, 2012, a post was made to the r slash gaming subreddit that made the front page and sent the community into a frenzy. And okay, yeah, it doesn't take much to set redditors off and cause subreddits to go into a meltdown, but the reception to this one post was so cataclysmic that it would go down in the history books as one of the site's most infamous posts. Dear Internet, I'm a 26 year old lady who's been developing a science based 100% dragon MMO for the last two years. I'm finally making my beta website now and using my 3D work as a base to create my 50 plus concept images. Wish me luck reddit, you'll be the first to see the site when it's finished. Little did user Queen of Hobo Jungle know that the words science based 100% dragon MMO would etch themselves into history forever, widely mocked and still referenced to this day. And while a lot of people do know this post on a surface level, what a lot of people don't know know is that the science based 100% dragon MMO wasn't just some throwaway post on reddit or a meme, it was an actual project. There's written game development plans, tons of concept art and even a website and if you're a freak like me you care about the deep lore of obscure random internet posts from 10 years ago. So today let's conduct a science based 100% deep dive into the lore of the reddit dragon MMO. Speaking of dragons, I want to give a huge thanks to the most appropriately fitting sponsor in the entire world for this video, Dragon City. Dragon City is a free to play mobile game available on all devices. Collect over a thousand dragons and build your empire as you raise, breed and battle them. Dragons gotta eat so grow food, earn gold and find gems to grow and customize your city and level up. Next up, train your dragons by teaching them cool new attacks and battling them to make them the very best like no one ever was. You can even take part in PvP battles with friends and other dragon masters. This is very fitting with this entire video, uh, you'll see why later, but you can breed two dragons together to create entirely new dragon species, hatch the eggs and feed your baby dragons to evolve them to be cool and powerful. There are tons of dragons to collect and you know I got a gush about these super cool designs because I spent my entire childhood as a weird nerdy dragon kid obsessing over dragon designs. You can even collect YouTuber dragons, that's right guys, all your favourite YouTubers are here from Mariah to Mr. Beast to, drumroll please? Da man. If that doesn't convince you to play this game, I don't know what will. There's tons more to do in Dragon City, from becoming a member of the Alliance, to work together in team events and unlock chests full of awesome loot, to completing exciting weekly minigames to claim daily prizes and catch new dragons. Download Dragon City by clicking the link in the description or scan the QR code and get a special free starter pack with 15,000 food, 30,000 gold and a rare Christmas elf dragon. Thank you so much to Dragon City for sponsoring this video, especially this video in particular. I still can't believe how good of a fit it is, and uh, let's get into this reddit dragon MMO. Before we delve into the deep lore of the reddit dragon MMO itself, let's take a look at the original post and the reception that it received. It was posted by user Queen of Hobo Jungle on January the 30th of 2012 to the r slash gaming subreddit which has 35.3 million users. Now reddit is a hellscape at the best of times and this is especially true in the biggest subreddits. Drama is almost always brewing and infighting is common with the most controversial post making it to the front page because people like to be mad at things. One such post has happens to be the post that this entire video is about. It detailed a 26 year old's game project, a quote unquote science based 100% dragon MMO. Aside from the insane scope of the project, which believe me people were talking about and we'll get to that in a second, the wording itself could only be described as baffling. It was science based, but what science was it based on exactly? Why place such a heavy emphasis on accurate scientific depiction for a fictional MMO about creatures that don't exist? And what exactly was a 100% dragon game? And then there was the image. That infamous image depicting seven very rough Z-sphere dragon sketches made in ZBrush and posed on top of a generic 3D background, which the OP later confirmed was made in Lumion, a 3D rendering software for architects. While the very rough early models and odd wording could be overlooked, what Redditors really couldn't let go was the blasé way that the OP described the scope of the project. For context, pretty much everyone who wants slash tries to get into game dev has some grand idea for an MMO that they'd like to make, unknowing or perhaps knowing and foolishly not caring that massively multiplayer online games are some of the most ridiculously expensive, time consuming and difficult feats within the game development world. Many many have tried and pretty much all have failed to create the next World of Warcraft or the next Final Fantasy, often because they underestimate the scope. I've talked about this on my channel before but when I was younger I was literally obsessed with dragon games, especially ones where you could fly around, like I had a problem. Eventually I got so fed up that I vowed to make my own dragon game, there would be thousands 
thousands of dragon breeds, a vast open world bigger than any Bethesda game, and the flight mechanics would be painfully in-depth. I don't know why this sticks out so vividly, but I remember when I was brainstorming this kind of game that I wanted, I specifically wanted really in-depth flight mechanics, so there was no manual flying, you wouldn't just, you know, press the arrow keys to move around, you had to specifically press a button to flap to make it more immersive. I really wish that I still had the old notebooks that I used to write all my game plans in, I'm sure all the information's all in there, and I'm sure it's even funnier than I remember. Basically, it was going to be the stuff of legends. And then I realized that I couldn't even use Blender or Maya to make a simple 3D model, let alone code an entire game, so I quickly gave up. My point is, Queen of Hobo Jungle was hardly the first aspiring game dev to have unrealistic expectations about their dragon game project, and boy did r slash gaming let them know. Do you have any experience making games? From what I'm gathering from your posting, you have a great idea that you think could be made into an MMO game. These ideas are dime a dozen and 99% end in complete failure and wasted time. Please don't take my criticisms too hard, I'm only trying to save you from inevitable frustration. If you are serious about this, I would recommend starting off with a single player experience using an established game engine like UDK or Unity. You need to focus on your core mechanic and ignore any thoughts of secondary features until this mechanic is refined enough to build an entire game around. Feature creep is a very serious thing and from what I'm gathering from your posting, it may become very prevalent in this project. Source, X indie game dev with many failed projects due to being over ambitious and overconfident in my abilities. Is an MMO a good idea as a first game? Don't they require 24-7 support and tons of post-release patches? This isn't a game that has been under development for two years, she hasn't even chosen an engine yet. The concept may have originated two years ago, but if that counted I could lay claim to some projects that have been under development since I was 10. I can understand why Queen of Hobo Jungle posted this to Reddit. It's a cool idea, she's probably been harboring it for a couple of years and she finally got around to producing some minor art for it. In a paroxysm of excitement and motivation, she posted this with the intent of generating buzz and publicity. Honestly, I think she blew her wad too early. When publicly announcing a game, it helps to have at least a partly constructed game, a trailer, a website, or at least a name. What are the would-be fans going to do with this information when they have nowhere to go and no way of tracking the project? It didn't just stop at criticism though, a combination of the ridiculousness of the post and the fact that it got to the front page with tens of thousands of views and thousands of comments was a little suspicious to some. And a conspiracy theory began to brew that the entire post was fake, just an elaborate ruse to farm Reddit karma. Seriously Reddit, you're so freaking easy to manipulate. Look again at the picture and at the almost zero useful info in the very long title and ask yourselves if this really deserves such a high score. Dear internet, 26 year old lady, science based, dragon, MMO, for the last two years, 3D, wish me luck, Reddit, link to Imgur. First thing I thought, Reddit's going to fucking explode over this post. Remove the word lady from title, this post would get three upvotes. I don't know why this guy formatted this reply like he did. <laughs> This isn't 4chan, buddy. No need to make a single sentence into a numbered list. Wait, so is this serious or do people not get it? I thought this was a joke about how to get to the front page of Reddit. Lady, dragon, science, video game, exclusivity, the word beta, and two years of work? That is the epitome of what all posts on r slash gaming should include for upvotes. On top of a crappy rendering, I'm surprised people think this is real. This is an interesting theory and I understand why it became so prevalent. Fake bait posts and Reddit go together like bread and butter, so a healthy dose of skepticism is important. But I don't think that the science-based 100% dragon MMO was bait, and the reason that I say that is because I found the deep lore. The thing about this post is that it's very widely known, I still see people reference it on Twitter and make jokes about it, but very, very few people know it beyond that surface level post. I'll walk you through the journey I went on as I discovered more about the game, and our first stop is the reddit thread itself, but we've got to dig a little deeper into the replies. Despite the barrage of criticism and let's be honest roasting, the OP actually remained active in the discussion and replied to a bunch of questions, providing us with some more specific info about the project, and providing the thread with more fuel for the fire. Things went off the rails early on when OP replied to a joking post asking quote, how much of the game revolves around dragon fucking, by saying that since the game was based on evolution and continuing bloodlines, most of it. The thread took this and ran with it and the project quickly became known as the dragon sex game on r slash gaming. I'm sure you can imagine all of the hilarious replies that spawned from this. In response to one of the many critical posts on the thread, OP claimed that they didn't plan on working on this game alone, instead planning to partner and build a team over time, though the funds required to pay an entire game dev team are never mentioned. This game has demanded, based on its mechanics, that I do things in order. 
It's taken a lot of groundwork, but I think I have a very good rich system that does not take the same amount of time slash effort as most other MMOs of its magnitude based on its principal mechanics. How much time do you honestly think you would save if you could build every single model off of one that you'd already created? If you knew how they link together, and that's just one of the new ideas. Excitingly, we also got an answer to that question about what exactly 100% dragon even means. I actually could have clarified, the main species are 100% dragon and show intelligence like a human. There are no human based avatars in the game but there is a completely new tree of life to explore. Hey I didn't say the answer made sense, I just said there was an answer. They also shared a few tidbits about the planned gameplay and lore, quote, If you're asking which dragon is first, it was the mountain, all others evolved from that. Mountains evolved from ancient wyverns who evolved from small insect eating tree dwellers. Like I said it's been about two years, I've had a lot of time on my hands. You can dig into the planet and uncover fossils, thereby piecing together your entire tree of life's history, yes. I was studying both biology and geology and started to imagine a game that runs more like a simulation. It needed a strong foundation which is why I built this game from the planet up. Everything in this game is intertwined and I didn't expect it to take me into physics and chemistry the way it did but I'm very glad I've learned as much as I have by making this game. Um, maybe I'm missing something but so far as I can tell you haven't made the game yet. It looks like you have a lot of ideas and some pretty crude concept artwork but I've yet to see a game. I appreciate your concern but so far I've been able to do everything I've hoped for up to this point. I can't guarantee I will go any further but I won't regret what I've done already if that ends up being the case. So what other types of animals will there be? Actual real life animals or all mythical ones? Both. I think life would be shaped by its environment the same way on any other planet but small changes in initial events would lead to massive changes. Imagine how life could have progressed if somewhere in the early life when fish were evolving something separated a single species giving one the push to evolve a third set of limbs into mandibles and the other the push for that third set of limbs to be used for movement and Instead. All life fits into either tetrapods or hexapods, dragons being the latter. It's been interesting to develop the game in all of the models this way. Any games with dragons must have wolves, ergo wolves with mandibles. Dear god. Unfortunately the wolves and all canines have six legs. They also mentioned that they were considering Quest 3D or Unity for the game and in probably the most wild post of all claimed that they estimated a 50 to 100 million dollar startup cost. Um. After scrolling through a bunch of these Q&As, I finally found it. The Jackpot, an Imgur link to an album full of science-based 100% dragon game concept art, a treasure trove of never-before-seen images. Okay, well, when I say never before seen, over 60,000 people saw it according to the Imgur page, but I've never seen these in my life nor heard anyone else talk about them. For the longest time, I thought this post was just that, a goofy, meme one-off post, so I was shocked to find so much actual content for the game tucked away. And we're not even done with this rabbit hole, but we'll get to that soon. So this Imgur album, comprised of 44 images, was described by the OP as season one quality, basically they're all very early rough concept pieces. A decent chunk of the images are just basic loom on 3D renders so we can skip over those but there are plenty of original pieces. There's the green dragons on a field image that everyone knows and loves but did you know there's an illustrated version of that image? It's actually really funny to me that this just happened to be the image that became well known like it makes sense because it was the picture that was attached to the original post but there are tons of other science based 100% dragon 3D renders to choose from. You have this little guy hanging out in a tree, these guys hanging out by a tree, these guys hanging out on a tree, sleeping, drinking, and frolicking on a beach. Love a good frolic. OP used several of these Lumion 3D and ZBrush renders as a sort of base to paint and draw over to create more bespoke pieces as well. It's clear in a lot of these illustrations that she traced over the background and models in her own style and she's honestly really talented. That original image from the reddit thread really doesn't do the art any favours which is why so many people were like lol, lmao, terrible models, this is so cringe but looking at their actual art they have a lot of talent. The dragons and creatures look really good, the anatomy is obviously helped by the models that they're tracing over but even aside from that the style and shapes are fantastic. Look at this big T-Rex looking fella. That shit is cool as hell, you can't tell me otherwise. Or this piece, the anatomy is really strong and those wings look gorgeous, they're clearly referenced off of bats and it looks super cool. Or this piece with this little dragon riding on top of this four winged bird, again those wings are gorgeous and the whole piece really captures that free flying energy that I was obsessed with as a tween. My two favourite pieces are this underwater one with a little guy riding a manta ray because it's funny and cute and the standalone sketch of a dragon riding some sort of yak like creature. The art style is on full show here, it's simple, it's strong, it's interesting and it's just a really good drawing. Some of the most intriguing images included in the album are the 3D models. There's a very basic and rudimentary dragon skull which is 
yeah. But there are several pages of fully rendered heads that look really great. We have the larger, more bulky arctic dragon with various different spikes and horns, a smaller, more the gelatinous dragon with a more amphibian appearance and more vibrant colors, and this raptor-esque dragon, sort of like a cross between a bird and a snake. I love this one with the little beak nose, I would 100% play as this guy. This is who I'm maining as in the science-based 100% dragon MMO. Comment below who you're picking as your main. Now full transparency, I never made my dream dragon MMO and thus never learned how to code or model, so I'm not exactly an authority on the topic. But personally, I actually really like these models. I think they have a lot of personality and character and I think they're pretty cool. I don't think they're AAA or anything, but if an indie dragon game came out with these models, I would eat that shit up. But again, I'm not really an authority and I'm interested to hear if any of you guys are 3D modelers or work with that kind of stuff and what do you think of the quality and overall style. Overall, this album is a really neat piece of lore. Again, I had no idea that there was this much content for the project, and while a lot of it is pretty basic and bare bones, it looks good and presents a lot of interesting ideas. You can really get a feel for what OP was envisioning when they were planning this game, and that's what concept art is all about. So there you have it, the story of the science-based 100% Dragon MMO, a project that looks shallow on the surface, but really deep down it was just kidding, I found more stuff. Yeah, while researching the topic, I somehow managed to find the OP's old deviant art and oh boy, boy did this lead me even further down the rabbit hole. Not only were there never before seen images, literally this time because these images weren't included on the MGA album and have presumably been seen by fairly few people, but there was tons of juicy info about the project itself. Now just a disclaimer, I'm going to be censoring names and I won't be mentioning the OP by name or bringing up any of their social medias just because this post is a decade old at this point and I'm sure that they don't want a bunch of annoying messages asking them about a game idea that they came up with 10 years ago. Now let's get into all this stuff, buckle in because there's a lot here. The earliest art for the game was published in June of 2010 confirming that at the time of the original Reddit post they had in fact been working on the game for two years. Well, a year and a half, but you know, close enough. The early art and the captions that accompany it paint a very different picture of the project than later posts would. From a post entitled Dragon Genetics Preview, quote, Concept art for an iPhone application I'm working on. It's a breeding simulation game that takes genetics and environmental aspects into account. It'll be available in a few months once I'm done drawing everything for it. A lot of programming still needs to be done. Just sparking interest. Ah, the innocence of youth. Thinking you can publish an entire dragon breeding and evolution game in the span of a few months. So this whole iPhone app story is corroborated on the original Reddit thread when OP mentions that a previous experience working on an iPhone app with a small team inspired them to make this game. Actually, they never mentioned the game being made for any specific platform after this, so it's possible that either A, it started off as a small app project in 2010 and ballooned in scope into an MMO for PC after that, or it was actually always intended to be an app for iPhones and that fact just never gets brought up when discussing this post. The game was originally referred to simply as the Dragon Genetics game in early posts and would later be tentatively titled Evo Dragons Online. From a poll we can see that they had 10 dragon species planned. High Mountain, Northern Coast, Arctic, Forest, Swamp, Desert, Savanna, Jungle, Oasis, and Tropical Coast. Those pink jelly dragons we talked about earlier, they're Tropical Coast dragons, and there's actually a second sheet of male heads that wasn't included in the original album. Very cool, I like their fancy little frills. The feathery beaked birds are High Mountain dragons, and again there's a second sheet here that wasn't included in the album. The green dragon, which we now know as a forest dragon, also gets a second sheet, and there's even a brand new dragon breed entirely. The swamp dragon, definitely the most menacing looking of the bunch. I love how they differentiate the forest dragon from the swamp dragon, which conceptually could look pretty similar, but they give them the sickly dark blue palette, sharp spikes and crags, and creepy orange red eyes. There seems to be a lot of inspiration from crocodiles here, and I can totally imagine these guys lurking in a creepy dark swamp. There's a big illustration featuring a bunch of sketches, some that were polished up and put on the Imgur album, and some that we've never seen before. Actually, now that I'm saying it, am, I think I've been pronouncing it wrong, it might be Imager rather than Imgur, I've just never heard anyone say it out loud, so let me know if I'm wrong. Anyway, the caption of this post reads, quote, Finally, the beginnings of the website art, and about 5% of it too, lol. After months of climate, geology, evolution, biology, chemistry, and astronomy research, I think I finally have a concrete enough concept to get this thing on the fucking road. Plotting two lines of vertebrae was something I didn't have foresight for, but in the end I gave myself more to create, so I'm not complaining. Next big research project is plotting 
plotting the soil and deposit layers based on geological history and activity. Do not get me started on mineral properties. Quartz comes in like six different compound chains. The deserts will be exciting after all. Pfft. And look, this isn't really the point of the video. I don't want to make this whole thing to just a roast of this project, but I think this post is a really good example of why this game never could have been made. Aside from the giant scope of everything, OP is so fixated on these really specific details of geology, biology, astronomy, uh, the soil, the minerals. Weirdly, I've actually seen this in a few other projects. Creators will spend a lot of time researching things that relate to their game or their project that aren't important. Don't get me wrong, some games do include things like this, but at this early stage, none of that is important. The only thing that the OP should be focusing on is actually developing the game. Back to the topic at hand, there are a few other sketches sprinkled in here too, like this piece of a swamp dragon with the caption mentioning that this is concept art for the quote unquote home layer, presumably the player housing slash home base of the game, or the very first pieces made for the game, which look a lot different to the later artwork. But then I found it the jackpot for the second time yeah again <laughs> i don't know why i wrote that jackpot line into the script two times and only just just realized now it's such a specific thing, why did I put that in twice? Lo and behold, OP had posted an actual link to the website that they promised to update Reddit on, and after the cataclysmic reaction that they got over there, I kind of understand why they never followed up on that. But what made me so excited about this revelation is the science-based 100% dragon MMO, actually has a name. Yeah, it actually has a title, it's not just the Reddit Dragon MMO or that game with the dragon sex anymore. Everyone, may I introduce to you Dragon's Blood Online. I don't know why I'm legitimately giddy about this, this is so exciting to me. So the website for Dragon's Blood Online is interesting. Obviously the site doesn't work now, it's been offline for years, but thankfully it was archived on the Wayback Machine so we can take a look at it. The site launched in March of 2012, just a few months after the initial Reddit post, and it went offline and became inactive around 2016. The tagline at the top of the page reads, You say you want an evolution? Below it is an illustration of the Earth surrounded by all kinds of creatures from plants and algae to basic aquatic and amphibian life forms all the way to bizarre six and eight-legged hybrid animals ranging from animalistic to dinosaur-like in appearance. These appear to be the mutated animals that OP talked about in the original reddit thread. Among these are several dragon-like creatures with wings and reptilian appearances and below the main illustration are a few full-size dragon illustrations. These are definitely interesting, they look distinctly like T-Rexes almost as if traced or heavily referenced from T-Rex art. They're also all wearing skulls, pelts or even carrying the full deceased bodies of other animals on their backs. Whether these were meant to be accessories or an example of bizarre mutated evolution is unclear. I had originally assumed that Dragon's Blood Online was just a generic edgy dragon name, but this logo shows that it's actually an MMO based pun on Dragon's Bloodline. And who doesn't love an MMO based pun? There's not too much else here, there are no other links or clickable items on the site, and the promise that the game is coming soon is obviously pretty empty at this point. There is one other thing though, at the bottom of the site it notes that the game is owned by a company called Revolve Squared and links to their site. It's pretty basic with a simple landing page, some neat graphics, a contact button, and a quote unquote CGI portfolio. While a lot of the 3D works in the portfolio look pretty basic, there are some really cool looking models in here, and a few of them can be directly linked to the Dragon's Blood Online project like this Nidaria. That's pretty much it though, and like the Dragon's Blood Online website, it went offline sometime around 2016. Okay, before we wrap up, I want to go through a brief rundown of what I think Dragon's Blood Online would have actually looked like based on the limited information that we have. A memorial, a tribute, an ode to a game that never was, if you will. Dragon's Blood Online, abbreviated as DBO of course, would have been set in the sprawling world of… um… Hyastadel, Eoxeria, Eosinia. Come on, we all know it would have been something like that. The OP described the game as having an over-the-shoulder view, so third person, and the imagery of baby dragons is strong throughout the concept art, so let's assume you start off as a baby and grow from there. In a reply to a DeviantArt comment, the OP confirmed my suspicions that there wouldn't be customization in the classic sense. You would be able to collect and earn accessories to dress up with, but different body sizes, wing types, horns, spikes, and patterns would have to be earned through breeding slash evolving. Now, despite the OP's confidence in the revolutionary evolution, through bloodlines and complex genetics kind of system, I honestly can't envision a way that that would work. It's an MMO, so either the player is mating with other players, which is dubious to say the least, or they're mating with NPCs found throughout the world. That begs the question, 
when the offspring are born, what then? Do you pick one of the babies from the clutch to play as, and if so, wouldn't that mean resetting all your levels and stats? Or do you just have a brood of annoying NPC baby dragons following you around indefinitely? The other option for the system is more evolution based, and that's definitely what I would go for. Not only would we be beating the dragon sex game allegations, but evolving by leveling up, hunting and eating mutated animals, finding certain items, and even defeating enemies or bosses would be a simpler and more entertaining way of playing. This way players would be motivated to do a wide variety of activities and level a bunch of different skills for different aesthetic evolutions rather than just searching the map for a new mate over and over again. I know this is probably a big no-no for the OP because it breaks the coveted science-based principle that the game is built on, but uh, come on. It's a fantasy game about dragons and six-legged wolves with mandibles, you're gonna have to make a concession on the whole science thing. I predict that in the game, Swamp Dragons would be the overpowered class that all the hardcore players would make min-max spreadsheets for. Forest dragons would be seen as the default breed and therefore basic and noobish so no one would use them. High mountain dragons would be the edgy emo kid class and there would be tons of complicated tutorials on how to evolve your HM to have black feathers and red eyes. Arctic dragons would be that one class no one uses. And tropical coast dragons would be the one that everyone uses to the point where it divides the fan base and people start posting tweets like, tropical coast dragons are basic and lazy, change my mind. And people would start making three hour video essays about it like, like, how tropical coast dragons ruined an entire game, the story of the worst video game class in history. And that's the world that we would live in if Dragon's Blood Online existed. <laughs> Beautiful, ain't it? The reason that I love the deep lore of this project and the reason that I made this video that like, two people are gonna care about is that I just love these kinds of projects so much. Like, yes, Dragon's Blood Online is ridiculous. Thinking you can make a complex evolution sim in a few months is bonkers, assuming you have the skills to make an MMO single-handedly is more bonkers, and casually dropping that you'll need a the 50 to 100 million dollar startup like you're discussing the weather is the most bonkers thing imaginable. I understand why the post blew up and was criticized so harshly on Reddit, these outlandish unachievable game development pipe dreams are dime a dozen. If every person who downloaded Unity and said I'm going to make a game that's better than every other game because it will only have good stuff in it and not bad stuff that I don't like before uninstalling it a day later because Unity tutorials are boring got to the front page of r slash gaming, you'd never see any other kind of post ever. But honestly that's what makes it so endearing to me. As I said at the beginning of this video, as a nerdy MMO obsessed wolf dragon kid I absolutely loved these kinds of projects and I had many many unrealistic dreams of making my own. I was naive and overconfident as well. I did the download Unity and uninstall it thing. I wrote pages upon pages of lore and mechanics and planning for the games I wanted to make. I drew art and got excited about my dream game finally existing. It never ended up eventuating, obviously, otherwise I'd be the multi-million dollar developer of edgy dragon RPG flight simulator online.com. But as I've grown older, I've honestly gained a really deep appreciation for unfinished projects. Now, if the OP had started taking donations, or had set up a Kickstarter for their project, that would be another story. That's, that's going into all or nothing territory. But these kinds of impossible pipe dream projects that people love and dedicate a lot of their spare time to and pour all of their heart and passion and dedication into and then just end up letting go are kind of like the purest form of art to me. I know that sounds weird and like pretentious, but that's how I feel. It's a glimpse into these creators' inner worlds. It's self-indulgent and incredibly earnest. They're not doing this for monetary gain. They're doing it because it's something they want to see in the world something that means a lot to them. Even though the projects never actually get made, there's something magical about those nights spent toiling away at a game design document or a movie script or an elaborate art project. It's ridiculous, it's silly, and the science-based 100% Dragon Reddit MMO is definitely hilarious to look back on, but as the OP said, I can't guarantee I'll go any further, but I won't regret what I've done already if that ends up being the case. Thank you guys so much for watching this insane video about a single post from 2012 about a failed dragon. Dragon MMO. Seriously though, I really appreciate it. I really hope that you guys enjoyed that video. Um, like I talked about, honestly, the, the dragon post is one of my favorite kind of like internet memes, I guess, and delving into the story behind it has been so fun. I'm honestly so excited that I found a bunch of lore behind it, and I really hope that you enjoyed uh, taking that in. I would absolutely love to hear your thoughts on this. Uh, tell me which dragon you would main. Tell me some, some ideas for the mechanics of Dragon's Blood Online. Uh, tell me about your projects that you 
started when you were younger or even now tell me about your pipe dream projects that that aren't gonna work out but you just you love and you can't let them go because I think we all have that. A huge thank you to Dragon City for sponsoring this video again. Honestly the perfect sponsor. I'm so happy that it like it matched up like this. Um, I've never had such a such a happy coincidence so uh, yeah definitely go check them out. The link will be in the description and I'll put a link on here um, for you to go check them out and uh, yeah thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed that video and I really hope to see you in the next one. Bye! Thank you so much to my Garfield overlords over on Patreon. Test Subject 0089, Caramel Coffee Bean, Blue Mayfeld, Electro Kitten, Katrina Likes 5e Stuff, Fitzy, Jorge K. Cruz, Michelle Olsen, Matt LRJ, SHSL Sunsun, Doug, Jordan Nielsen, Dana Homegardner, Charlie B, Simon, John Leach, Ren Pendragon, Xavier Araujo, Helm Hamburger Hand, Dozo Blint, Sheriff Whiskey, The Furby Librarian, Astrian Vortex, Jesse Chisholm, Fish000, Grip Gunderson, Joe Bradshaw, and Arcantilus. Thank you guys so much for supporting me, it means the world. If you want to join these guys over on Patreon, the link will be in the description. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, I really appreciate it, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!